Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. So in this video, we'll discuss about the uh, a case study uh, with a case of uh, drug-induced Steven Johnson syndrome. Okay, and uh, in, in this case, uh, Mr. John, 78 years old, um, was admitted to the ward with a complaint of rash all over the body. Okay, it started with fever, chill, and mouth ulcer since uh, five days ago. And then he had a generalized red purpura rash spread to the whole body and neck. So the rash is pruritic, which means uh, it's very itchy. Uh, it is painful and discriminating. So there is no cough, uh, shortness of breath, and uh, chest pain. So the vital sign is a bit, uh, the BP is uh, a bit increased. The pulse rate is okay, uh, 85. Temperature is slightly increased, 7.9. And uh, respiratory rate, 18. And the SPO2 is still uh, okay, so 98, 98%. Family history, uh, he lives with uh, children. Occasional alcohol drinker, non-smoker. Uh, he has epilepsy and he has a history of hospital DD uh, last two months with one episode of seizure uh, treated as uh, aspiration pneumonia, also having hypokalemia and he is also having hypertension so that explains the uh, increase in BP. So past medication history, he was started on uh, catfenitoin 300mg ON uh, since his previous admission to hospital DD because of the one episode of seizure. And uh, for the hypertension, he got a metoprolol 100 mg BD and perindopril 8 mg OD. So the diagnosis here is Steven Johnson syndrome or, and uh, they want to rule out the cause of that. So question, uh, describe the incidence etiology and clinical presentation of Steven Johnson syndrome. So the incidence of uh, SJS in, uh, in, uh, specifically in our population is actually quite rare. So it is a, a, an immune complex mediated hypersensitivity disorder uh, and globally it can occur within a, uh, between 1.2 to 6 cases per million per year. Okay, uh, And uh, among Malaysian population, the prevalence of uh, this this reaction uh, in association with uh, two types of uh, anti-epileptic which are phenytoin and carbamazepine it's about 0.2 percent okay 0.2 percent of of patient receiving phenytoin and carbamazepine might have this um, this uh, steven johnson syndrome uh, the etiology is mainly the because of the uh, reaction to the medication. So 80% of the cases uh, of uh, Steven Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis are drug related uh, and the, the mechanism of uh, or the pathophysiology of the reaction uh, it involves the activation of a ligand on a T cell and then the T cell will will um, will lead to an extensive apoptosis or the cell death of uh, keratinocytes or and cells of the epidermis and that subsequently lead to epidermal detachment okay so the uh, it is um, related to immunological reaction in which the t cell or the or the um, immune uh, mediators are actually attacking our own uh, or the patient's own uh, cells and it can be it can present uh, it can be presented um, with a milder version which is uh, less than 10 percent of body surface area so this can be called a uh, Steven Johnson syndrome but if uh, the 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 coverage of the reaction is more than 30 percent it can be called a uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis so the early symptoms can be fever the patient can have sore throat difficulty in swallowing, swallowing runny nose sore red eyes so that involves uh, the 
the inflammation of the mucous membrane first and then the later sign would be the the mark erythema or the skin uh, of the skin uh, or the uh, the formation of the vesicle and necrosis of the face the neck or any other part of the body okay the second one discuss the possible drugs associated with hrs in this case and how to determine the causality Okay, in this case, uh, when we look at the past medication history or the medication that the patient is taking, um, from these three, uh, only the possible one or the probable one would be the uh, phenytoin because phenytoin is, the, is one of the antiepileptic that is um, most commonly associated with this reaction. Okay, what are the other drugs that might cause uh, this reaction are allopurinol or phenytoin, also famitoxazole. Okay, so he was previously on phenytoin uh, last two months, and uh, as we know, uh, this this SJS or ten reaction can occur within three months of initiation of the drug. Okay, so this patient was on uh, this drug for for the last two months, so it is a uh, uh, it is likely that it can uh, it, that it was caused by phenytoin in this patient. So identify uh, the third one is identify the goal of therapy for Mr. Join. Of course, uh, we want to um, identify the causative agent, which is the uh, which is phenytoin, and we want to remove uh, the use of the drug. So we can we have to discontinue, and we want to. Um, manage the symptomatic uh, the symptom of the patient so we can manage the uh, the the symptom of the patient using hydration or um, pain management okay and we want to prevent any complication uh, okay and then these are the laboratory findings of this uh, patient and notice here that the CE reaction increased and uh, and he's having hyponatremia and uh, for calcium it was uh, still within the normal range and also uh, uh, an elevation in WBC so these are also um, the presentations of uh, Stephen Johnson syndrome he can have erythroid imbalances increase in, in WBC increase in CRP and also notice here the serum creatinine is slightly increased so we want to uh, prevent any complication of acute renal failure in this patient as well. So the plan, the plan is to give high, IV hydrocortisone, 100mg TBS, IV manitidine, to reduce the, uh, to, to alleviate the, the itchiness, and uh, tablet profeniramine and tablet uh, cetrizine, also for the itchiness, uh, and the, uh, to reduce the, the histamine reaction for local application for the scalp face and lips and also the body different selection of um, topical agent or topical uh, uh, drugs are used for example for the scalp um, we use cetavalin shampoo for the face we use a milder form of uh, steroids for the lip we only use a liquid paraffin and for the body, we can use a, a slightly stronger steroid, which is the Tamatoxone cream and also Aqueous cream. And so, what are the laboratory findings consistent with the diagnosis of uh, SJS? So, we have mentioned before about the sodium, WBC, CRP, okay? and discuss the key principles behind the therapeutic management plan for uh, Mr. John. So the management is the, of course, first we want to stop the offending drug. So the second one, notice that uh, he was given, um, he was given the uh, steroids, okay, IV hydrocortisone. So we want to um, reduce the inflammation of the patient uh, and we want to also uh, manage the uh, the symptom of itchiness and inflammation and also it's not included here is actually hydration so the patient needs to be hydrated and corrected 
the, the electrolytes need to be corrected. So he needs to be given sodium chloride. Okay, and also, uh, if the patient having uh, infection, and um, here we have an increase in WBC, and uh, if the patient have a temperature spike during the admission, so we also want to cover for infection. Okay, so we can give a paracetamol and also start with um, any selection of uh, antibiotic, which is um, which is uh, whichever is um, appropriate in this patient. Okay, so we can have uh, a list of uh, different type of drugs that can cater for the uh, the complication of this uh, reaction. Okay. So speaking of complication, what are the complications that might arise? Uh, we have mentioned before infection, patient can have infection because of the open wounds, um, acute renal failure, and electrolyte imbalances like hypokalemia, hyponatremia, and also once the reaction, uh, once the, uh, the patient recovers from the reaction, it can have a hyperpigmentation of the skin. Okay, and uh, monitoring parameters for the drug therapy plan, uh, we have to monitor closely for the hydration status, look at the input-output uh, chart, and also the temperature of the patient uh, and WBC for the infection, and also monitor uh, closely monitor for the serum creatinine uh, uh, to, to rule out any acute renal failure associated with this reaction. And we also want to monitor for the uh, efficacy and safety of uh, steroid treatment, uh, this uh, clofeniramine or cetirizine. Okay. And um, to wrap it up, um, I think the most important thing that you need to know in the management of drug-induced uh, skin disorder, because anything related to drug-induced, we want to identify the offending drug and we want to uh, remove the drug, the offending drug mm, and also in this case it relates to the uh, skin so we have to make sure that the, the patient was was given uh, hydration to, uh, to prevent any dehydration and also the um, also steroid to reduce the immunologic reaction and scolofenirumine or ranitidine or cetirizine just to reduce the inflammation and reduce the itchiness and also um, monitor for the complication okay we want to prevent any complication uh, for this patient okay uh, I think that's all so if there's any question uh, please uh, Please ask me anytime, okay? Thank you.